In this video, we'll do our best to inspire you to level up your building and deco skills. Hi all, and welcome to another episode of our build and deco series. While we have previously looked at various room setups, today we'll be focusing on ideas for your garden. As with our other videos, it's less about a finished build, as this can be done to your own taste and more about creative ways of placing planters or other elements to enhance your outdoor area. Note that we are only using the base game and DLCs for these builds, no mods are used or required. We do have a few mods on the server for our own convenience, like Pippi and Building Shortcut Bar, but nothing that affects what we create. What better backdrop than the lush green highlands for our build examples? Let's get started! Before we discuss a few more advanced ideas, let's look at how you can enhance your basic planters with a few simple changes. For example, if you have unlocked the Merchant Science feats from the Library of the Esoteric Artifacts, you can use these signs in combination with your planters. Yes, this is very basic, but often it's those basic little things which can make all the difference. Adding the sign makes a simple planter directly look like a dedicated vegetable planter. Another very simple element which achieves a similar effect are spikes. Add two or three spikes, straight or with a slight angle to your planter. In combination with, for example, a lotus plant, the planter looks directly more like a pot you'd find in a garden or on a terrace. One last thing to keep in mind is the placement of planters in general. While we often tend to place them in a row next to each other or at the corners of buildings and similar, Think about different placement patterns. In this example, we have simply placed five planters in the shape of a cross. And most importantly, accessorize the setup with numerous small placeables. A less linear placement and choosing the right decorative placeables can make a simple setup look a lot more immersive. Now let's move on to some examples that incorporate other bigger placeables, for example benches. We first place a planter that will serve as a reference point. Next, we place two wooden benches parallel to each other. Now we can remove the initial planter and place it properly. Fortunately, the wooden benches allow for some overlap, so we can place three planters between them. As always, we accentuate this little setup with a few placeables. And done. This small and simple build can be used anywhere around your house or garden to break up larger areas or to add a place of rest. An alternative, smaller build can be created by using benches from the Derketo DLC. For this example, we want to build a square with four benches. As you will see, placement is a bit trickier. For some reason, it is not possible to build bench after bench and going from corner to corner, as this doesn't allow for the last bench to be placed close enough. Because of this, we will have to build the other benches first, before placing the final two benches in between. This requires a bit of visual estimate and potentially replacing benches a few times. Once the square of benches is in place, we can now proceed with placing two planters in the space between. Your mini bench build is now complete. As we all know, fountains make for excellent focal points in any garden. There are a few really great designs available in the game that look great by simply placing them as they are. 
However, incorporating them a little bit more into your overall design or greenery can not only create different looks, but also make them feel more like part of your overall build or create a really cozy oasis. In our example, we use a statue of refreshment, which can be crafted at the Sanctuary of Mitra. The idea is to surround the statue with luscious green hops plants. You can of course choose any planters or plants of your liking. Once done, we add a few matching placeables. And while relatively simple, this setup already looks a bit more like a relaxing little place of refreshment. Instead of placing planters simply behind the well, you can also place some planters closer to the statue as it's possible to overlap planters within it. We personally like this slightly more overgrown look. Before we show you a few more advanced garden ideas, let's take another look at planter placements and more elaborate ways of incorporating them. You can create really nice fences or planter-lined pathways by using pillars in combination with planters. In order to create this nice pillar rows, we need to use a pillar placement trick. Place your first pillar at the desired height, followed by a ceiling. Then place stairs at the edge of the ceiling towards the direction you want to build the row. This allows you to place another pillar underneath the stairs. Remove the stairs, place another ceiling and pillar below and repeat the first few steps for the desired length. Once finished, remove all the ceilings and now you have a nice row of pillars which allow you to place evenly spaced planters between them. While this is great on its own, it also makes for an eye-catching planter and pillar-lined entrance for your home. The building works the same as shown before, but you start with a pillar towards the side of the desired path. If your foundation is at an unfavorable height, you'll most likely have to free place the initial pillar. This will certainly make your entrance stand out. A great way to create more orderly and neat looking garden patches is by using fence foundations to enclose your planters. You can build them in any desired size, but let's look at some layout examples based on a square of four fence foundations. In our top view you can quite nicely see how planters can be placed within the fence foundations. In the left setup. We only placed four planters, they fit quite leisurely and are easy to place. Especially with a bit more lush green like the hops plant, this might be an easy quick build. The setup in the middle contains nine planters. This is when you really want to max out the space and get a great variety of planter options. Please note that placing the planters can be quite fiddly. You need to find a perfect spot so each are still placeable without too much overlap and also don't stick through the fence walls. One thing we have learned is that placing finished decorative planters is a lot easier as they allow for more overlap in general. Last but not least, the example to our right. Here we used only 5 planters, leaving 4 free spaces where some decorations can be placed. This works as well with seven planters and leaving two free spaces and so forth. Now let us show you how to build the last example with the free spaces for decorations. When placing the fence foundations, the height will depend a bit on the location and a more even ground is preferred. 
In our case, we raise them 7 steps. Once the first is placed, simply snap the other tree to create a square. Now comes the tricky part. In order to use, for example, small stools in the free spaces where we want to place decorations, we need to place them before we place any planters. Unfortunately, once planters are in place, you won't be able to fit most placeables. Once this is done, it's time to place the planters. It might be easier to place the corner planters and decorations first, before placing the planter in the middle. We occasionally had issues placing decorations afterwards when the middle planter was in place. Stacking two planters in the middle also looks great. Here are a few more finished builds using various layouts, planters and fence foundations. Vetterwains from the Riders of Haboria DLC make for great garden deco as well. You can also stack multiple planters for more height as seen here. A patch using 6 fence foundations, offering the possibility to place 18 planters or a combination of various layouts. Three patches next to each other. Sandstone fence foundations look really great here, especially thanks to the wooden top frame. You can also place signs on many fence foundations. A nice touch for the passionate gardener. As you can see, there are a ton of possibilities when changing layouts, materials, plants and additional accessories. If you want to add a cozy area to your garden, but don't have too much space, let us show you a nice little setup that is perfect for relaxing breaks between adventuring. First, we are building two fence foundations fairly flush with the ground side by side. Then we place two paved stone walkways from the Riders of Haboria DLC right in front of them. They are freely placeable. This outlines the rough size of our little garden retreat. Sticking with the theme, we build two half-height lattice walls from the same DLC on top of the fence foundations. Now it's time to surround this space with various planters for the much needed relaxing green. We place all our decorations before placing the garden canopy, as placing it first resulted in some placement issues. Lastly, we place a simple tent as cover. While this is a fairly basic build, it adds a nice little space that can be further customized by adding some braziers, different furniture or planters. Whatever fits your base best. Here we combine two of the spaces to create a larger garden area. Our next garden idea is a pergola build with lots of greenery. It is not only a great place for relaxation or festivities, but also adds a nice splash of green, especially if you build in areas with less vegetation. We are starting by outlining our build with fence foundations. The build is 4 foundations wide and we use mainly insulated wood. Next we are placing 4 door frames.
Now we cover the build with 4 hatch frames. Half height wall lattices from the Riders of Herboria DLC are being used in the back. We complement this with some vertical decorative beams. It's not a requirement, but adds extra quirkiness. We insert lattice doors from the same DLC into the door frames left and right. For our pergola roof, we use reinforced hatch doors that create a nice and airy feel. Next, we enclose our roof space with wall caps. We start adding some of our decorations under the pergola space, as we can still access the area much easier, before placing planters and creating the green accents. Once happy, we start placing matching wooden planters on the roof, in the middle of the hatch doors. Additionally, we stack three planters in front of the two centered door frames, and repeat the same process on the back of the building. Now get your hops ready and start planting. The stacked planters create some nice green columns. We add some final decorations and the pergola is complete. Our final and most complicated build is a relaxing hideout beside a custom-made garden path. The perfect place to study maps of distant lands or to read some of the many journals which can be found around the world. We start building our custom garden path by placing a first fence foundation. Depending on your location and terrain, you might raise the foundation more or less. In our case, we raise it by four steps. Now, another fence foundation would normally snap to the one we placed first. So to avoid this, we will use a barrel as a blocker, in the usual snap path. This allows us to place the next fence foundation freely and at a slight angle. We're aiming at a rustic, imperfect look. We repeat this for three further fence foundations until we have created a slightly curved fence. Next, we place three paved stone walkways freely along this border. This will be our indicator for where we need to place another row of fence foundations. We place barrels to mark the positions next to the outer two paved walkways and remove the ladder. Yeah. 
now it's gonna get tricky. We build a fence foundation roughly parallel to where we want our final fence to be. You might need to play a bit around with the placement, like we did, but once happy with the distance, you can remove the barrel and place the final fence foundation, followed by a new paved stone walkway. Yep, this looks pretty good. We repeat the process on the left side. The empty space in the middle of the path is where we place the foundations for our little hideout. Three veg foundations will do. Now we do the same as we have done before with the fence foundations. We mark the edges of the two outer wedges with a barrel and remove the wedges. This now allows us to free place some pillars on the edges where the wedges will be. Once placed, you can rebuild the two outer wedge foundations again. We also built a wall cap at the back of the center wedge and placed two further pillars at the outer edges of the paved walkways. Next, we place two planters on each side of the wedge foundations. We don't want to place more yet, as to make it easier to place some of the last items. For the roofing behind the platform, we use an awning in the center and an awning corner on each side. You might need to change your positioning a bit to get the first awning to snap further below in the ground. Once the awnings are in place, we can now comfortably add the last few planters underneath the space. Decorate the little rest area with some items of your choice to make it comfy. While we have managed to place some small barrels on top of our pillars in the past, Funcom seems to have changed something. Luckily we found something new that we can place onto pillars that looks pretty good. In this case, two Stygian earthenware jugs. And let's not forget about wall lanterns for some ambience. And that was our last build and deco idea for today. Keep in mind that it's all about the concept, and if you don't have all the DLC pieces we've shown today, you can build most of it with other materials and add decorations you have and like. If you're still watching, here's a quick summary of all our garden ideas in this video.
that's our summary. Feel free to copy any of our designs or simply take inspiration for your own unique build. We hope you have enjoyed the video and please leave us a comment if you would like to see us cover other building topics in the future.